Hey, what's up everyone? Adam here with Probably Got This, and today we have another build for you all, and this is my new build series, my Invincible Solo Builds. This series will focus on taking a class and making a build that can hit hard, is easy to play, and that can survive with ease, and most importantly, solo the game. The best part about these builds are that you don't even need a mythic item. So welcome to my Invincible Solo Necromancer build. Real quick, I want to give a shout out to my patrons and my YouTube members and all the Twitch subs and YouTube subs, everyone. Thank you so much for the support. I really do appreciate all of you guys. If you want to check out all those links, my Twitch channel, Discord, my website, probablygotthis.com, all the links will be down in the description below as well as this build on the website eventually coming out in the next few weeks. So in this build, I'm going to try to set this up differently and give you item loadout that you can play not only at high CP levels, but item sets you can go for at level three and level 25 and then level 50. That way you're guided through the build from level three because I think a lot of times players don't know what to do in the beginning stages of the builds and I want to try to alleviate that by giving you beginner setups to work towards and then have the full setup that will really make the build shine. So for the race, we are going to be using the orc. The orc is a great race for stamina characters or just in general. The reason I love orcs are that for this build, you're going to get increased weapon and spell damage you're going to get decrease in sprint cost and increased in movement speed you're also going to get a max stamina boost with the brawny passive and the unflinching rage passive is amazing because it's going to heal us when we deal damage and it's going to give us more max health this is really nice for solo play now for the class we are obviously using the necromancer the necromancer is a little bit more advanced so what i've done for this build is try to make this as simple as possible we will get into this here in a little bit more, but this build should be able to help you understand this a little bit easier. Now the stats, Mundus and food. For the stats, we're doing 64 points into stamina. So as you're leveling, all you gotta do is dump all your points into that. It's very simple. We're hitting around 31.8K max stamina, around 56.1% weapon critical. And some of these stats, again, are unbuffed. So that is really nice in my opinion. The Mundus stone we're using is the Thief Mundus. Uh, that is going to increase our spell or spell and weapon critical. You can use the Lover Stone though if you want to get more penetration and the Shadow Stone for more crit damage. These Mundus Stones are in the base game area zone so you can pick them up pretty early on in your playthrough. Now for the food we're using the Dubious Camorn Throne. This is going to give us Stam Recovery, Max Stamina, and Max Health. This is really nice because we are going to need that Stam Recovery and Stamina. Moving on, what skills are we using for this build? Well, what I'm going to do is show you the setup of the final iteration of the build, explain the skills and why they are there, and then I'm going to show you how you should level your character from level three to reach these skills quickly or efficiently. So for the back bar, we are using Arrow Barrage. This is a amazing damage over time. It does tons of physical damage, and that is one of the key strengths of the Necromancer is doing damage over time. And I'll get into that here in a second, but this skill is just a great dot. The next skill we have is another dot, Razor Caltrops. It's going to reduce movement speed of enemies. It's gonna apply Major Breach, which is amazing uh, to put on enemies, and it's gonna do a lot of damage over time. It's just really nice. The next skill is spirit guardian okay spirit guardian is fantastic it's going to heal us over time but the big thing that it does is it takes 10 percent of the damage away from us essentially and this is also going to create a corpse which is big for the necromancer the next skill is beckoning armor i really love this skill because it pulls enemies to you every three seconds that hit you with a ranged attack so it's really nice for grouping enemies up for solo play it's also going to create a corpse and it's gonna give you major resolve, which is fantastic because that's going to buff your resistances up for yourself as a solo character. The last skill in this line is Avid Boneyard. This is, again, a insane damage over time. It's going to deal 50% more damage if you consume a corpse on cast, and you can activate this synergy yourself doing even more damage to enemies. This is something you wanna always have up if you can because it's going to just wreck enemies with it. The ultimate is Ravenous Goliath. This is going to basically make you unkillable, and it's it's essentially your your old crap I'm about to die ultimate it's fantastic you use this in a bind you're gonna use your other ultimate more but this is just in case you're going to die the front bar the first skill is wrecking blow this is our main single target spammable it's fantastic in the two hand line it's going to give us empower which increases our light and heavy attacks by 40 percent damage wise which is fantastic I'll show you how to weave that in later in the uh, rotation section the next skill is ruinous scythe this is a heal that you can use and spam in a conal area so you can use this to 
to clear mobs, but then when you need healing, just spam this and it will give you some nice healing. The next skill is Camouflage Hunter. This is solely on the bar for the passive effect it gives us by just slotting it. When you have it slotted, you gain Major Savagery and Prophecy, which will increase weapon spell critical rating by 2629, uh, which is really, really nice. And if you do flank an enemy, you will gain Minor Berserk. Use, we're going to be having that at all times, and you'll see that here in a little later in the build. So the flanking part really just doesn't matter, but it's for that passive boost. You don't have to ever activate this. The next skill is Stampede. This is our AOE spammable or one of them, and it's to get out of a bind if you're, you know, slowed or anything like that. It also is going to help us just do a lot of damage. This is our two-handed skill. Uh, this is one of my favorite skills in the game, so you want this on the bar. The next skill is the Blighted Blast Bones. This is, again, a crucial skill for the build. This is going to output potentially tons of damage if you can utilize it correctly, okay? I'm going to show you the best way to utilize this later in the rotation but it's going to do a lot of damage around the area that explodes in and it's going to create a corpse which again is very crucial the last ultimate here this is our main ultimate pestilent colossus this is going to wreck enemies it's amazing and it also is going to apply major vulnerability to any enemy hit for 12 seconds increasing their damage taken by 10 percent this is a mvp ultimate that we want to use at all times if we can now the progression for the skills like i said i'm going to show you what you need to do at level three and until you get your skills it's pretty simple like all the other builds you're gonna have one skill in each of your lines available so you're gonna slot venom skull you're gonna slot scythe you're gonna slot uh render flesh all you need to do is when you're in grave lord get to blast bones and then slot these two and then when you get to avid boneyard you could just use these two instead of venom skull and you'll get all your a graveyard or grave lord skills pretty quickly when you level up you'll need scythe and beckoning armor that's basically all you need uh so once you get those you can put them on your bar and you'll level up this line very quickly for living death you're gonna need spirit guardian so you will have to slot another one of these skills to really get up there pretty quickly but once you do grab spirit guardian and then uh you can get your uh, level 50 skill pretty quickly after that for weapons two hand you're gonna be using the first two ones pretty simple you're, you'll have these at the very beginning of the game for the most part you'll have this at the beginning once you equip and this will be very soon afterwards and for your bow all you need is the second skill so again put that on the bar as soon as you can for your guilds for the fighters guild for camouflage hunter all you gotta do is do dolmens and you'll get this very very quickly and then for uh the pvp line for razor cow chops do the intro cyrodiil quest that takes 15 minutes to do at level 10 you'll get to level 3 and then you just need to do some battlegrounds or cyrodiil until you hit razor cow chops it's not that bad i promise you that is the skill progression now for passives you want every single two hand passive here you want every single bow passive you also want every single medium armor passive and for the fighters guild you can uh get a slayer and you can get Banish the Wicked. Now, for Racial, you obviously want all the passives for your Orc. But for the class, you want every single passive. These passives are amazing, okay? One of the biggest ones I want you to see is Rapid Rot from Gravelord. Increase your damage done with damage over time effects by 15%. We have so many damage over time effects. Damage over time, damage over time, damage over time. Uh, that's going to do a damage over time eventually. It's it's just insane. It's such a good Passive. Then Death Nail increases your critical strike chance against enemies under 25% health for each Grave Lord ability slotted. That's going to be 8%. For Bone Tyrant, you're going to want every single passive as well. Uh, it's just fantastic. And then Living Death, you want every single passive as well, which is very rare. You don't usually use all the passives for each line, but for Necromancer, literally every passive, in my opinion, for the Necromancer is just so busted. So pick up all these passives and you'll be good to go. Now we're gonna go into the armor sets, okay? Again, I'm gonna give you a progression of these armor sets and alternates of the armor sets as well. So you, if you're level three, level 25, level 50, you know, any of those, you'll be able to see all of that. But the end game armor sets that you wanna go for are a slime crawl for the headpiece. So that is a monster piece from, um, Wayward Sewers 1, it's very simple to get. This is going to give us crit chance and minor berserk at all times, increasing your damage done by 5%. That's what I was talking about earlier. You'll want divines and stamina on these and medium head and shoulders. The body piece is Briar Heart. You guys know I love Briar Heart. This is going to do, uh, this is going to give a lot of crit chance. And when you deal critical damage, increase your weapon spell damage by 450 for 10 seconds. While this effect is active, your critical strikes heal you for 234 health. This is amazing. This is in the Overland of Rothgar. You want max stamina and chance and divines. And this really goes well with Stampede because you're always going to crit with Stampede. Stampede, so it's going to heal you. It's it's just such a good combo. Next set is 
Vicious Affinian. This is from the Craglorn Trials. These are so, so good, okay? And this is going to give Minor Slayer at all times. Increase your damage done to dungeon, trial, and arena monsters by 5%. It's going to add crit chance, and it's going to reduce the cost of your stamina, stamina abilities. Uh, and when an enemy you recently damaged dies, you restore 2454 stamina and gain Major Expedition. That will give you even more speed that you'd already have as an orc. Using the two hand and jewelry, the jewelry is robust and stamina recovery, and the uh, weapon is precise with absorb stamina enchant. Uh, this, the jewelry does not need to be yellow if you do not want it to be. The bow is the bow of agility with absorb stamina enchant and precise. This again, is just easy to do. It's gonna give max stamina. That's why I don't have a maelstrom or an arena weapon here because I want this to be as easy as possible for you. Okay. So if you don't have these item sets, what do you need? So at level three, you can get Hunting's Rage, which is a six piece crafted set. Someone can craft that for you, or you can wait to craft that. You could also then, uh, when you hit level 10, start going for Viper's Sting, which is in the Fungal Grotto Dungeon. Okay, you can also go for Twilight. Twilight's another good crafted set as well. And those are the three sets that you really should go for, in my opinion, all the way to level 50. So if you can somehow get those sets, that's the best thing I would recommend. Now, when you're at level 50, you could start farming for Leviathan, which is in Crypt of Hearts, which again can be done earlier anyways, but the sets that you really can just focus on doing or crafting for yourself Hunting's Rage, Twilight, and then you can grind for Viper Sting and Leviathan in those dungeons, and that will carry you to CP160. Now, when you're at CP160, you should be able to craft any of those if you've been researching your sets, okay? So you should be able to have a full set of something at CP160. You can then start grinding for Briarheart in the overland of Rothgar. And once you have that, you could honestly go do the trial, the Craglorn trials to get Vicious Ophidian. It's not hard. They're the easiest trials in the game on normal. Once you get those, you can then go get your slime crawl helm and shoulder, or you can get your slime crawl helm and shoulder before that if you'd like, because Wayro Sewers one on vet is not that hard, but you should be able to have a full set of armor by CP 160 because you should be researching your traits and everything like that. So that's the progression for the item sets. It's very, very simple. Now, if you want alternatives, if you're struggling to stay alive, you can put on the ring of the pale order and then just take off the slime crawl shoulder and put on a vicious ophidian shoulder. That's something you can do. You can also use Leviathan if you would like. Uh, and so those are just some alternatives if th that suits your uh, fancy a little bit more. Now for CP setups, CP setups are pretty simple for the most part. Uh, we're going 50 into Reaving Blows, 50 into Fighting Finesse, 50 into Thaumaturge, and we're going um, 50 into Untamed Aggression. So that's gonna give us increased weapon and spell damage. Uh, that's going to give us damage over time effect damage boost and this is going to give us critical damage critical healing and this is going to heal us when we do direct damage so in order to get to start getting these all you need is around 100 and like 10 120 cp because you can just put a little bit of points in each of the prerequisites and you'll be able to start work working towards it all the other stars you see are just ones you do uh, as a benefit or as a bonus once you can start getting these built out okay now for the red tree, um, it's pretty simple again, rejuvenation, survival instincts, bloody renewal, and then we're using our sustained by suffering. Again, you only need to be about CP 110, 120 to be able to get this stuff as well and then fill out all the other stuff uh, as you get more points. And the green is up to you because it's mainly non-combat stuff. Now, what we're gonna do is we're gonna go over the rotation, okay? Here's where the necromancer is tough sometimes because people uh, struggle with the rotation. I struggle with the rotation as well. I mean, I'm not perfect at this And so I want you guys to know that and so I'm still learning it really well But I've tried to simplify this as simple as I can for anyone to play Okay, what you're gonna do is you're gonna start back on your back bar You're gonna want to get your pre buffs going first. So you're gonna use your armor and then you're gonna have your guardian These are the pre buffs. These are the things you want before you engage in a fight Okay, so then what you're gonna do is you're gonna go arrow Caltrops, Graveyard, Stampede in. Okay, use your uh, Boneyard's Synergy, and then you're gonna go Wrecking Blow, Light Attack, Blast Bones, Wrecking Blow, Light Attack, Blast Bones. Okay, that is the simplest rotation I can find for you. Then when you need to reapply, you'll go back to your back bar. So again, we're gonna do it again. So pre-buff fights, armor, uh, the Spirit Guardian, Arrow, Caltrops, Graveyard, Stampede, Wrecking Blow, use your Synergy, remember that. Blast Bones, Light Attack, Wrecking Blow, Light Attack, Blast Bones, 
and that's essentially what you want to do okay now i'm going to go over a little bit of the specifics here so wrecking blow is really good to weave your light attacks in because it increases your light attack damage right so you'll see here that i charge up my wrecking blow well as you're charging up your wrecking blow you can actually click the light attack and you'll do a light attack so watch as i charge up light attack charge up light attack charge up light attack so when you come in here and you start your first wrecking blow light attack and then blast bones light attack wrecking blow light attack blast bones light attack okay so again we're gonna do that again wrecking blow light attack blast bones light attack wrecking blow light attack blast bones light attack okay by that time you're gonna need to switch bars okay so again we put it together we go spirit guardian summoner's armor arrow cow traps, graveyard stampede use your boneyard synergy if it's up okay wrecking blow light attack blast bones light attack wrecking blow light attack blast bones light attack switch bars and you see that things are back up again put your stuff up that use your synergy light attack blast bones light attack wrecking blow light attack blast bones light attack switch bars that is the rotation now you want to use your colossus at any time that you have it up because it is ridiculous okay so you want to always have that up when you're in an aoe fight you can spam uh, runa scythe and uh stampede and you can still do your blast bones because it's going to do damage to all the enemies okay so that's just something you have to change in the rotation there uh besides that it, that that's the simplest I can make the rotation for the most part like all my other videos and guides for these solo series um, that is what I try to do is I try to make it as easy as possible if you want to check out all of those builds I'm gonna have them on the website eventually here in the next couple weeks but they all are in the channel and you can check some of them out here in the top of the cards if you did like this video make sure to like subscribe heavy attack that bell icon to stay up to date on all the content in the channel and again make sure to let me know what you think about this build down in the comment section but again check out all the social links probably got this.com discord twitch and just remember have faith be great and check out all the videos in the card above y'all later